If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This is your host, Heather Bayer, and I am delighted to be back with you for another hour or so of uh, of interview and chat and general great content. So settle in and today I am talking to a professional photographer and vacation rental owner and manager. Uh, Amy Greener has uh, has been on my radar for a long time. She has properties in the Smoky Mountains and she is, uh, as I say, she's also a professional photographer. So she does vacation rental photography too, which is dear to my heart at the moment because my renovation of my cottage, Kingfisher Cottage, is nearly done. We've had, we've, we've done so much to it. We've done a completely new paint job. We've put in new windows, new furniture. Um, we have, yeah, just just about changed everything. You know, if I could have taken a few walls down, I, I would have done, but uh, that's not on the cards. It wasn't in the budget, but we've done a huge renovation job and the time is coming that I'm going to have to get in there and do a complete photo shoot. Now, unfortunately, I don't, you know, I've really looked around for a, a professional photographer, somebody who does professional photography in my area who will get out and say, okay, come and bring all your equipment and do a fantastic job on the interior of this property. Now, I haven't been able to find anybody and I'm still going to be looking, but in the meantime, I'm going to really try and have a go at it myself. I have been getting better at taking photographs. I now, I don't use the auto setting on my camera anymore. I've got it all set up to shoot in RAW and I use Lightroom to adjust the photographs. And I have to say that the, the, the outcome is pretty amazing given my limited expertise in, in photography and uh, photo editing. So I'm really pleased with uh, with how that's coming on and I am learning as I go. You know, I just download uh, YouTube videos to to give me some ideas on how to get uh, how, how to better adjust the photos when I'm looking at exposure and looking at the highlights and the shadows and uh, and all these things. But what I want to talk what I wanted to talk to Amy about apart from her movement from owning her own properties into being a property manager and managing properties on behalf of other people, which is what a lot of people do. But I also wanted to pick her brains on how to take the best photographs of a property, you know, what angles to do, what angles to take them from, um, when to do close-ups, when to step back, you know, what corner... I've always been one to sort of stand in a bedroom door and, and just take a shot from the bedroom door. Now I've learned a lot from uh, Tyan Marsink, who's another great vacation rental photographer, and my bedroom pictures have really, really improved. But I want to, uh, I, I want to start, you know, really honing those skills and getting them better and better. So hopefully, after my chat with um, Amy today, I'm going to be able to get down to Kingfisher and uh, and really get going on my uh, my photo project, uh, which which will be the culmination of the whole renovation project at, at Kingfisher. After that, I'm going to feel much better in posting up my before and after pictures. Now, I've already got hold of uh, most of my guests who are coming this summer because they're all returnees from last year. And it's absolutely, well, it's just exciting to be able to tell them all the changes that have been made and We've had such a great response from them when um, when I've told them about uh, you know the new furniture and lightening up the walls, and and everybody's been really positive and they can't wait to come see it. 
So, uh, so this is going to be a lot of fun. So without further ado, let's mo- move on over to the interview with, uh, with Amy Greener from Smoky Mountains. So I'm delighted to have with me today Amy Greener, who hails from Tennessee, one of my favorite parts of the world. How are you, Amy? Well, how lovely to have you with me. Thank you, Heather. I'm wonderful today. And I agree with you. Tennessee is a pretty nice place to be from. <laughs> I, I know. We've, um, we, we do an RV trip every year. And for, for so many years, we used to finish the RV trip in um, a, a little place called Welland, which is yes. not far from you, um, a place called Misty River, actually. Um, and, and we used to leave the RV there for the winter because it was far more benign there than it is in, in Ontario for a winter. So we're going to be doing that again this year. So we'll be back in Tennessee. And I, it is so gorgeous. Your Smoky Mountains are just a wonder. They're, they're, the, they're one of the wonders of the world. Oh, thank you. I think a lot of people would agree with you. We're very, very fortunate to have a lot of, of followers and people who just come back year after year. So it, it is a great vacation rental market. Thank you. Yes, and I, you know, so sad that uh, that you know your your area suffered from uh, from that um, the the forest fire last year. That was so devastating. Um, how how is it recovering? How is the area recovering? You know, uh, it, it's interesting because um, I think the media coverage of it. Um, you know, of course, the the pictures were so devastating, and you saw people driving literally through fire on the left and right of their cars, going down mountains trying to escape. It was dramatic, no doubt, and there was a lot of damage to the um, the, the 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 area. But it's it was very confined. Um, if you if you could see a map and see where the fires were at. They're not like out in the open, you know. So if you drive through Gatlinburg, you have to look for where Mm -hmm. the damage is. Um, And there are some places on, you know, the edge of town and different places that you can go, oh, yeah, there's, you know, where there's raised properties, where there's, you know, nothing there anymore. Um, But you have to go look for those things. And fortunately, Pigeon Forge was pretty much untouched. And all the things that people know of of the area, like the arts and crafts community, Dollywood, Obergatlinburg, um, I mean, the the vast majority of the park was untouched by the fires. So, you know, there's a lot of people who think that the fires just wiped us out, that there's nothing left. And it is it is like totally opposite of that. And so the challenge now for people who own vacation rentals, whether you're in North Carolina or Gatlinburg, you know, that area in the Tennessee region is getting the word out that we're OK and that there is rebuilding going on. But there's definitely the businesses are there and the people are waiting um, for, for people to book. So we're hoping to get the good PR out. So thanks for letting me do, do that little PSA there for us. Oh, absolutely. And whatever I can share, I, I, I will. You know, I'll take to Twitter and talk about it. I know I've talked to David Angotti before from SmokyMountains.com. And, yeah. uh, you know, he's doing much the same. He's just trying to get this word out that uh, that you, you are you're very much still open for business. So talking about the business... Give us your story. You know, how did how did you start with your vacation rentals and um, and where are you now with them? Sure. Well, I'll, I'll try to condense it down because it, it goes all the way back to 2002. Um, we we used to go to the Smokies uh, as a young family. We didn't have a lot in the budget and we couldn't have really afford to do um, week long vac- vacations and go further away. So we would go for like four day trips to Tennessee. We, we lived in the Ohio and Michigan area and was so convenient just to travel down there. And with three young kids, it was manageable. You know, we could afford it. It was a nice market. So we'd go down there and enjoy ourselves. And after a couple of years, we were like, you know, we might want to, you know, get a fixer upper. And we found one. And in 2002, late that year, we bought our first property and we now own five others. (laughs) Um, didn't, Didn't plan on that. But like a lot of vacation rental owners, you kind of get the bug and you get, you get one. And then maybe a couple years later, another opportunity comes along. And so after we bought, uh, four properties, um, our fourth, we started to have neighbors who said, 
hey, would you be interested, because your place is always booked, would you be interested in managing mine? So um, about three years ago, uh, a little more than three years ago, I started managing for other people. And so I just have a few, I have just a few clients and um, we're, we're a very, very small operation. But it's nice because I know everybody and it's very personal. And at, at some point, yes, we, we will plan on growing but for right now, it's been really good these last three years because I've learned a lot of things and um, made mistakes and made adjustments. And now I feel like we're ready to grow the business. That, that's fantastic. So you now have have how many? Five of your own? Um, I have five of my own. And then I manage uh, six other properties Yeah, for four other owners. And when you say you're going to grow the business, does that does that mean that you, you've got... Um... You've got visions of, of a much larger company in the future, or is it something that's just going to organically grow over time? I think more organically than anything else. Um, I have someone who is a past, well, actually a current guest, um, who uh, has stayed with us for many years, and he's looking for properties, and he says, if I, he goes, I'm putting offers in, he says, if I get one, will you manage for me? <laughs> um, I a number of people who have said that and they're looking for property. So um, it, it's one of those things where um, I actually don't mind growing by word of mouth because I feel these people are already people that I know, people that I know I can work with. Um, there's a comfort factor in that, I think. But uh, but also, like you said, um, I think we're positioned. I just did a, a, we did a new website. We've got new software. We've started with um, you know, a lot more tools that I can do more automation and make things go a little smoother than than the, um, you know, doing a kind of one off the way I have been. So I think once once we get everything kind of smoothed out and this year is our smoothing out year, getting everything in place, I think we'll be in a good position to to do some growing. Well, that, that's terrific. I love to I love to hear these stories. You know, it's 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 how I started. Um how how so many others how others did you know they started with their own properties bought a couple bought some more and then you know started taking on others and it's 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 a nice growth story it's it's, it's slow and gentle um yeah yeah i'm in no hurry because <laughs> as i as i had mentioned we've made mistakes i i've devoted either too much time to a particular, you know, venture or an idea. And it's like, oh, what was I thinking? You know, um, or something is too hands on or too expensive or too labor intensive. And as you make these mistakes, then when you start managing for other people, you realize, OK, this if we want to accomplish this, here's a better way to do it. Or we have the tools to do it better or we have a system set up to do it better rather than um, trying to start and learn with everybody else's properties. It's, it, it, it's been a, a real good thing to learn and make mistakes with my own, even though, I, I mean, I, it sounds like I, I, I don't have my act together when I say make mistakes, but we do. Everybody makes, you know, where we overshoot and we think, oh, well, I can do this or I can do that or we'll put out gift baskets and we'll do this. And then all of a sudden you've got yourself into, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how much we were spending for this or how much labor was involved or how much detail. And you cannot, when you try to do um, economy of scale, you really have to think a little differently than if you have just a single property. So it's been a good experience and I'm hoping that I can carry that through. So our, our focus is to present a, a boutique type experience for our guests without losing that as we grow. And that's why I'm not in any hurry to grow real fast because it, with fast growth can come some real, real growing pains too. Now I know, cause I've, I've been through that area that you know, everywhere you go, you go around every corner and there is an, you know, that the, there's a vacation rental company on one side of the road and there's another on the other side of the road. And you just can't get away from this, this com your competition, I'm guessing. So yes. what, what do you do to be different, to, to stand out from that competition and, and just offer that edge to, um, to, to your clients? Well, I think that for, for me, the number one thing is how we handle the guest experience. Of course, it starts with the properties, you know, and how well we put them together and the expectations that our guests have. So we you know, make sure that, that these properties meet them. Um, I, I would never take on a property that is not guest ready and or, or has the, or the, the owners are 
ready to make the commitment to do the things I need them to do so that we have that consistency throughout our brand. But I think even more so is how you handle your guests from, from the first point of contact, what kind of things they get from you. Like, for example, um, how quickly you respond, how you respond, the words you use. Um, um, like when we, when we, uh, follow up with a, with an automated message, even though it's automated, it says, Welcome to the Blue Mist Cabins experience. We're excited to have you as our guests. We'll be back in touch with you, et cetera, you know, going on and on. Um, we try as much as possible to keep that then all the way through. So whether it's a phone call, it's a text, it's um, an email, um, it, it can be any form of communication, but the consistency has to be there. And we try to provide that really high level of hands-on um feeling so that the guests feel like, wow, these people are like there if I need, I mean, if I need to know if there's a crock pot or there is a, um, an ironing board or whatever, I could actually pick up the phone and call. I don't have to go to the website and search for it, that these, this, this organization appreciates and welcomes, you know, communication. So, you know, we do things, I think, just a little more hands-on um, than our competition. We obviously don't have the big numbers and uh, the staff to support, but we also have uh, an efficiency. We run very lean and very simple. And for that, I think it makes it easier for the guests and they love the personalization. Um, when they when they come in, we they can ask for an earlier check-in if they get into town. Sometimes we can accommodate them, sometimes we can't, but they know that we are there for them every step of the way. If they have an issue, they can text or call or email, and we're, we're really hands-on. Because I do hear that from a lot of people who say, I stayed with a rental company, and we couldn't get the hot tub to work, or we couldn't get this to work, um, and nobody ever came out, or nobody returned our call. And to me, that is a, that's a, a misstep. So if I can provide that, you know, filling in the gap and do the kind of service that people are not expecting, then we we grow our, our return guest rate and we end up with good word of mouth and good reviews. And that's where, you know, of a business, you can't, you can't have enough of those things. Oh, you're, abs you're absolutely right. And, you know, I've, um, I've been a guest in many vacation rentals and, and, and one of those things that, that I find is a little frustrating is, is when I'm left to feel that I shouldn't be asking questions. You know, you, you just you just hit the nail on the head for me, actually, when you when you said about, uh, you know, somebody picking up the phone and asking if there's a crock pot. Um, <laughs> because often as a guest, you're left to feel by by some way that you've been communicated to that your too much your 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 questions are are trouble. You know, you're you're asking too many questions and you might get a, a very brief one line answer which basically says beh between the lines you know you're asking too many questions and you're bothering us so I, I i certainly got from you that that is not the case that that would not be the case for you if somebody was asking is there a crock pot and if <laughs> um right. half day later they're they're back saying oh by the way is there a blender too <laughs> yes and and you know we do get a few guests like that but the vast majority do not, and and we really don't mind it. And, and I think a big part of, of avoiding those phone calls is being as thorough and complete in your information up front. So your guests, you know, they can look over things and go, ah, oh, I'm not sure if they have this. And, th and then I welcome those calls, you know, because then I can make sure that they, they know that when they get there, they don't go, oh, there is no crock pot. And then they have to go buy one or change their cooking plans or whatever. And if we can avoid those little frustrations, because that's that's why I always tell my housekeeping staff, the main thing that I try to do is make it as seamless of an experience as possible so that when they get in there, their expectations are, number one, exceeded, that they're like, oh, this is really nice. We didn't expect this. But also that the little frustrations that can pop up we, we've we've avoided those at at the front. We have we've made sure that they are as prepared as possible. And you can't you can't get that with everybody. You're always going to have people who don't read the information, 
Don't bring their rental info with them. Don't read the PDF. And you just roll with it. But that's, thank goodness, the minority. <laughs> well, you're, you're talking about the universal, the universal issue that we all face as, yeah. you know, owners <laughs> or managers. And at the amount of times I've heard that, why don't they read the information? Right. But at least if you're supplying information that you, 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 you've, you've got 80% of the way and right. you, you, right. you, you just can't, you can't make people read stuff. Uh, and it's interesting because I do all, I do so many of these interviews and that's something that comes out so often is, you know, I wish people would read what we send them. And, and I don't think anybody's ever come up with, with the, the solution to this. You know, how do we, how do we resolve it for everybody? And I'm sure we won't anyway. But you sound like you have a wonderfully streamlined operation and you've got all your ducks in a row, which, uh, which is, is, is great. And I'm, you know, kudos to you for, 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 for growing in the way you are. And I you know, give you, you know, wish well, every, you every good fortune for, for continuing to do so. Thank you. Um, the other thing, you know, it's lovely to hear about the business, but I'm going to get to the nitty gritty now because, you know, what I haven't <laughs> mentioned is that apart from the fact that you, you run this successful um, vacation rental company, you, you're also a professional photographer. And you, I know you run a, a photography business that does um, people photos, but you also offer vacation rental photography. So tell me a little bit about that and about how that works for you. Sure. Um, well, you know, and, and I actually, um, I don't really take pictures of people anymore. I do have them on my website, my amygreenerphotography.com, but, but mainly because Right now, I'm so busy with the vacation rentals and with my, my clients who need vacation rental photography, I just don't have time to do people. <laughs> so, unfortunately, the, the uh, family portraits have to go. I just don't have enough time. But the, um, and I have to be honest, vacation rental photography is absolutely my passion. Um, I, I, I took classes at the University of Tennessee um, a few years ago. Um, just a little backstory. I used to be a, a voice talent. Um, I still do a little bit, but not very much. Um, I was diagnosed with a vocal cord condition, and I can't do the vocal cord. I mean, don't can't do vocal work anymore like I used to. So um, because of that, I kind of thought, well, maybe I need to find another venue. And I took all these classes, did about a year and a half, and I learned that I just had this this thing for taking pictures of architecture. I mean, nothing against people. I love taking pictures of people, but there's just something artsy about the lines and the light and structures and shadows and texture. And being a vacation rental owner, I needed pictures. So I started, you know, practicing with a wide angle lens. I had to invest in a specific, you know, lens to do that kind of work. And I was having such a good time <laughs> and I'm thinking, wow, you know, if I get some lights and I could probably do this for some other people. And, and as I grew my business, um, one of the things I offered was I would take the photographs for my owners so that they didn't have to go, you know, hire a photographer that I could do them for them. And then word started getting out that Amy does photography. And so mostly through word of mouth, but also through my website, I've picked up some some clients. So I've been doing this the last, oh, three going on four years now. So I'm not a real experienced photographer. I've been doing this all my life, but it's something that I've picked up in the last few years and I just love doing it. Well, I think it's become uh, all the more important in the, in the last, in the last few years. And, uh, you know, as, as home away has and Airbnb and every other listing site has grown, the competition has got bigger and, People are vying with each other, often with very similar properties. So they've got to have some way of standing out. And having professional photographs done is one of them. And, you know, now when you go to any of the listing sites, you are bombarded with these fabulous photographs. And, and it makes such a contrast, doesn't it, when, it, it, when you see the DIY ones beside them? Oh, it, it's, I think it's more so than it ever has been, Heather, because... Um, you know, years ago, when I think back to 2002, when we used to advertise on VRBO and um, it, the, the pictures were small, you know, they weren't very big. So if you had professional photos versus 
home cooked to a photos that you took mm. with your little point and shoot camera, they really didn't stand out because they weren't that big. But now the resolution, meaning the size, you know, the pixel dimensions are so much bigger. And when you look and you go, wow, that's a nice big picture. And then you see the next listing and you go, wow, that's a not so good picture. <laughs> it's just, it's under a magnifying glass. And just like you said, the, the stakes are greater than ever before. It is, it, it's not the same environment that we were, you know, even five or 10 years ago. So to have photographs that really present your property well is an absolute crucial thing to have now. Yes, I've I've been looking for um, for a property to go to next February. I do a, a trip every every February, and next year we're we're looking at somewhere different. And but but we're wide open to to areas, you know, somewhere in the Caribbean, somewhere where where warm and sunny. And mm-hmm. and I've been going through different listings, and it's been amazing how many I've just come to, and the the, the first photograph is is a it just turns me right off and I don't even look any further because the 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 feature photo is not attractive enough to capture my attention and take me deeper into the listing so and and I don't remember doing that in in years gone by it used to be find a location go through every listing but now there's so many so it's it's just so important. So I'm going to come now to um, something that's you know it's a it, it's really um, personal for me because I have my own property. I'm about to uh, I've just just about finished a renovation of it. Um, it was one of those renovations you know that starts with oh let's let's um, let's paint the doors or let's paint the trim and now we've ended up putting all new windows in and doing all the walls and complete new furniture and. Uh, it's a it's a completely different looking property now, but it's but now I've got to photograph it and I don't know you know I've I've looked around there's a, there's a ton of people out there taking people pictures, but mm-hmm. I haven't been able to find an architectural photographer to come and do these photos for me. So I've been taking pictures of my own uh, of my of properties in our vacation rental portfolio for our management company. We have about um, 180, 190 properties. So mm-hmm. I have learned, um, I've learned to shoot in raw instead of just using point and shoot. And, and I've learned to take them into Lightroom and, and do my editing. And I'm actually very pleased with the results. But, uh, but when it comes to sort of staging and what sort of pictures to take, that's where I get stumped. You know, I'm all for, you know, how, how do you stand? Where, where do you stand? Where do you, where do you start when you go into a property? How's about, sure. that? How, how's about that for a question? <laughs> okay. Okay. I think that's, well, number one, I want to say congratulations on learning to shoot and to be able to edit your own photos in raw in Lightroom. Cause that's what I do. And that's really what most professionals use. Um, there are other programs, but Lightroom, um, you know, made by Adobe is, Pretty much, you know, that's that's a that's a high powered tool. And it, it's it's not something you just, you know, pick up and go, oh, I know how to do this because it takes a little bit of a learning curve. So I'm impressed with you. <laughs> have, you can do that. That's great. Well, I have a, I have a business partner, actually, who 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 does a lot of photography and oh. and and he has sort of, you know, he's he's pointed me in the right direction, hasn't done a great deal of in, in terms of, of, of teaching but I can get on the I can I can get on Skype with him and and uh, share my screen and say okay here's this image and so what am I doing with it now so I'm adjusting the exposure and looking at the highlights and the shadows and and all the other things and bracketing and it just it, you know I'm I'm learning as I go along but uh, yeah I just wanted to share with people that you know if if you can't get a professional photographer you can learn to do this so. yeah you can. You can, you can. And, and, you know, the, I, um, uh, I've used, I mean, I know this may sound kind of, um, you know, counter to saying, oh, you know, you need professional photos, but you can use, I, I've used my iPhone to take pictures of my rooms. Now they are not even close to the wide angle lens that I use on my, my, um, you know, camera and they, and I don't have the benefit of being able to shoot, um, with the exposures corrected or to bracket 
um, as like you were saying, where that's where you take multiple shots of different exposures and blend them in in post. Um, but if you are kind of savvy and you know what you're doing and you think it through, you could actually shoot most properties with a, a, a cell phone. The cell phone cameras are so good today. Some of them are just amazing. My husband has a new phone and I'm going, wow, that's got my iPhone 6 Plus B. That is a good camera. <laughs> so there are things you can do, but you have to kind of know what you're doing. And I'll be glad to share a few tips if I could help out. Okay. Well, yeah, that would be great. So let, let's go back to, you know, you walk into a place. Where, where, do, you, where do you start when you're... I mean, okay. Did you check um, the place out first and then, and then or, or do you have a, a set... Um, set number of shots that you like to take from from particular angles sure well i mean when i go in i know i have to capture at least obviously 24 photos because everybody is pretty much on the home away platform so you've got to have 24 really good images um and, and i don't mean like well we'll get 10 good ones and the other ones are just opposite angles or just you know filler like bathrooms and things like that no i mean you want 24 really good pictures so when I go in, um, I actually go around the house and I get a feel for it, but I look for where the light is. And that when you're shooting um, without lights, and when I say lights, I mean like, you know, where I'll have a, a, a speed light or a light on a stand, you know, that kind of light. Um, I don't recommend using a light on your camera if you can help it because they can sometimes look a little flashy. But if you're using your phone, let's just say, for example, I would go through a house and go, okay, where is the light really bright coming in the house? I'm not going to shoot there first. I'm going to go shoot where the light is more balanced, say on uh, like the north side of the house or where the sun is not you know, moved over for, at that point. Um, and maybe later in the day we'll have light coming through. So you want to go where you can, you can, first of all, turn on all the lights in the room. Um, I do not like to see lights off. I really prefer to have them on. Um, and then you take the room and you kind of you kind of um, look for things that are distractions. So I look for things like plastic white trash cans. I see those in a lot of shots and anything that's really light or really bright, like a roll of paper towels or on a kitchen counter or a towel that's white. Um, that may be like like, for example, we people will, will make uh, housekeepers will make these. Um, towel swans and elephants and creatures and they'll put them on a bed and maybe the room is fairly medium to darker toned and then you've got this you know towel animal that's really light on the bed well your eye is going to go to that instead of looking at the beauty of the whole room so I delete I take things out that are distractions um, if you're doing a bedroom I always make sure that the, um, the, the pillows and everything are as nicely plump and placed and that the, the a quilt or the comforter or whatever you have across the bed is nice and tight. There's no wrinkles. Um, the bed skirt, you make sure that's all straight. You check the blinds, make sure those are straight. There's all these little detail things because if something is awry, the eye catches it. Everything looks perfect except for one thing, you know, and then your eye goes there. So I try to make sure that I catch all those things. Once I've got the lights all set up, you know, where they're all turned on, I make sure my lampshades are perfectly straight. No seams are showing, you know, for the lampshade. Um, and then you start to go from corner to corner. And I do try to photograph at least three angles of every room so that then you can see the, the best bones. Just like, just like we have a better side of our face, rooms have a better side. So you want to make sure that you capture at least, you know, three angles. And then when you're in in editing and choosing, OK, which ones are going to make the grade and go on the website, you have the choice of, OK, this one is definitely my first choice. This is my second. And then you might keep the third in a separate folder and say, well, that's my extras. And I always tell people overshoot so that you have these extra photos for when people either um, they might build a website out and they want to have lots of extra pictures or you might want to have a folder that you keep for each of your properties. And when people say, do you have any more pictures of your property? You can say, well, yes, I do. <laughs> and you can let them have those pictures. 
So you look really organized and you have those those extra shots that may not be needed for for like VRBO with only 24 images, but you can use it um, for other applications. Um, tell me about um, shooting in bathrooms, you know, particularly small ones, because there's only so many toilets you can look at. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. And, you know, what I do is I do have a lot of clients who have like I had a lady who, who has five bedrooms and five bathrooms. Now, there's just no way that we can shoot two angles of every bedroom and and even just one of every bathroom. I mean, the whole listing would be full of bedrooms and bathrooms, and you'd have nothing left for those key living areas, like your dining and kitchen and living space and outdoor decks and all that stuff. So um, what I always recommend is if you've got multiple bathrooms, shoot, um, shoot your master, of course, you always do that. But you can't just put one bathroom on there, or people are going to think, well, they're all like that. And that's not the case. Your master might have, you know, larger or more you know, spacious features or, or maybe, um, have nicer details. Pick one of the bathrooms that is the easiest for you to shoot. As long as it's fairly representative of the other ones, just shoot that one. And then that way people can see, OK, here's the master bath. And then here's one of the other bedrooms, bathrooms. So you get a feel for what they can expect. You don't have to put them all up there. Um, if you're shooting with like an iPhone or you have, you know, if you have a cell phone or something, it's going to be really tough to get a wide enough angle in a bathroom. It's almost impossible without a wide angle lens. So in that case, you really almost have to shoot vertically. And, and I should have mentioned before, whenever you're shooting, you shoot um, uh, lens just, you know, uh, the horizon uh, style. You want to shoot horizontally. Room. I have been known <laughs> to hold my phone vertically to try to get as much of the room as possible and just step back. And and sometimes you have to stand in the the very edge of the, the doorway and put yourself right up against um, the doorway and, and hold that phone as best you can. That's all you can do. It really, there is not much with a bathroom that you can do. And I, I would just give um, one more tip. Never put the toilet in the, the focal point or in, in what I would say, right where it looks big in the picture. Try to shoot so that the toilet is, number one, put the seat down and, and <laughs> just kind of put it, it's there. <laughs> it's there, but don't make it so prominent in your picture. Try to focus on mirrors and showers and things like that. And if you have difficulty where you just can't shoot the whole room because of its its size, then just focus on, on one or two features. If you have a beautiful shower with beautiful tile work, then shoot that. And that and then people can at least get a flavor for what your your um you know bathroom is like. Yes, that's uh, that. That's some great advice. You know, it's I, I'm I'm always lost when I get to a bathroom, and, and you're absolutely right. You end up sort of trying to squeeze yourself back into a corner and get as much as possible in there. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, what what we tend to do is, you know, we 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 do that overshooting, so we have all the bathroom photos. So if somebody says, "Please, can you send me some photos of all the bathrooms?" Yeah, you can have five toilet pictures by all means. <laughs> But they don't have to be on a list. <laughs> now, what about kitchens, Amy? What what tips do you have on staging a kitchen? Because i've I've seen I've seen some kitchen photos where the the countertops are full of of all the nice shiny appliances, and others where they've all been put away out of sight, and there's just one or two uh, feature um, feature things <laughs> in the image. Sure. <laughs> what, what do you recommend? Well, I think it's a matter of, of personal taste, but what I would suggest is less is always more when it comes into photography realm. Um, if you, if you have a lot of things on your counter, there are a lot of distractions. And if you have, um, nice big countertops, or if you don't have nice big countertops, even in that case, it is more important that you declutter. Um, what I was talking earlier about paper towels. Um, I usually, when I go into a kitchen, the first thing I do is look for anything white 
So paper towels go unless they are on a roll and it's like on a, a fixture, say underneath the counter, and it has one of those um, horizontal holders. There's nothing I can do in that case. But sometimes people will have a vertical one. It's just sitting there. I remove that because it is a very bright object for the eye to go to. Um, anything that's on the refrigerator, if you have like a house rules or something, you know, or you might have magnets with pizza delivery or something on them, those I strip off because your refrigerator will look so much better if you don't have a bunch of things stuck to it. Um, I try to minimize what is on the counter so that it's just what people really need to see. So they can see the functionality. They can see it. It looks fairly clean and neat and large, hopefully. So if you've got bottles of dishwashing liquid sitting out with a sponge or you have towels neatly folded for, you know, washing and drying and things like that, if you have um, little notes or little, uh, you know, st little stands with things on them, I take those things off and I kind of, I usually put them under the sink and I just hide them there for the shoot and then I bring them back up when I'm done. So that when you're when you're taking your picture, you don't see all these other distractions. Um, I also look for cords. So if you have a, um, you know, something like a, a toaster or a, um, a coffee maker, and it's got a cord, a white cord sticking out, or a black cord, I will tuck those behind. I will also sometimes hide outlets. I'll move a coffee maker over six inches to hide an outlet. So the idea is is that you make the kitchen look as as nice and clean and professional as possible without taking it down to nothing. You know, you have to have something there, but you also want to make it look as as professional as possible when you shoot without a lot of clutter. And what about um what about sort of the close-ups because I've seen on a on a couple of your listings that you have photographs of of an open cupboard that has um you know, a really nice array of colored dishes inside of it. Sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, I did that because um, I had purchased all these different colors of knockoff Fiesta wear and the guests love it. And they're like, oh, these are so cool. You have all this colored dishware and stuff. And I thought, you know, I need to, I need to show people that because it sets you apart. People will remember, oh, that's the site with all the colorful dishes or that's the site that had the Keurig coffee maker with all the little coffee pods there and it says you know coffee station help yourself um those kind of things are what people will remember and I call those detail shots so if you have something special if you have a really nice stove or you have a nice little coffee station or your dishes are are you know memorable or colorful or you have um pots and pans hanging overhead over a, a, an island and they're really nice attractive take a picture of them it'll it'll make you stand out because like you know you say everybody looks at these listings and if they all look the same after a while and there's nothing that differentiates you then it it, it doesn't do you any good so so those detail shots are really nice to set yourself apart that's fan that's fantastic and i you you've given me a ton of um of ideas and uh, i'm going to i'm going to get going i'm going to go uh, I, and i think what what's come across from this conversation um largely for me is something that i don't have or i haven't really paid attention to and that's the attention to detail you know you've been talking you've talked a lot about um the little things and paying attention to those little things so so that's what I'm going to go and and do. So I won't have any more photographs with the white bin in the corner or the dog bowl. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's what most of us do. We, we don't pay enough attention to detail. You just walk in, grab, grab the iPhone, start taking pictures, and then it's not until you get back home again when you think, oh, I wish I'd moved that dog bowl. Or I hadn't. I hadn't I've done it any <laughs> yeah, I hadn't noticed that empty beer bottle in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, uh, so thank you for that. That that's 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 terrific. Um, you will see the results of my my work in a couple of weeks' time because I'm going to post it on my on my website um, with, with all the before and after shots of the renovation. I I talked to some designers as well, and they've given me some really good tips on 
on how to on, on how to renovate. So so with that, so uh, you know, with um, with with talking to Sarah Honecker, um, with talking to Sally um, uh, Sally Eaton, um, and now you, I think I have it all all in hand. Wonderful. Good. Good. Can I give you one more tip? Absolutely. A, okay. Something that you'll see a lot of when people shoot, you know, because they're not professionals, they stand there with their camera and whatever height you are, if you're five foot five or six foot two or whatever, we hold the camera right there and we just aim slightly downward. And when you shoot professionally, as you probably know this, but we'll share it with everybody, um, you want to shoot as so that the walls are not, as we say, converging. So that so what I teach people when they're shooting is shoot from basically your belt and lower your either lower yourself down or <laughs> the camera down so that you can keep the walls perfectly um, vertical. So you don't have your vertical lines um, out of whack when you shoot. You don't want to look down in a room. You want to look across a room. So when I shoot, I squat down to just about what I would say is you know, somewhere in that 40 something inch mark. And I hold my camera perfectly level so that I don't get those lines where you're, you're looking down into a room. Oh, excellent. I'm going to, I will be practicing that. <laughs> I'll <Okay>. practice, <laughs> practice that before, before I do it for, for, for good. Fortunately, I'm, I'm only, I'm within walking distance of my property. So it's not as though I'm, I, I will go and do a shoot and then come away three hours and three hours away and then regret what I've, um, what I've taken. Um, at, least, oh. at least if I make mistakes, it's, it's only a matter of um, three minutes in the car. Well, I think I have a lot of faith in you. It sounds like you have really put some time and, and attention <laughs> into your photography. I can't wait to see your pictures. This will be great. Well, I actually had, I had a, um, a contact today from a new owner, uh, hopefully a new owner that's going to come onto our agency um, portfolio. And and this property looks absolutely magnificent. It 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 sleeps up to twenty. It's it's an island. It's an island in the middle of a lake, and on on sixty acres, and has um, a main cottage and three more cabins. And and it's you know it, it it's it's an older property, but which is full of antiques. So I am so excited about going out and. For to- photographing this place because I've seen it on VRBO, and I, I I understand why it's not getting booked. And I was looking at it and I thought, oh my gosh, I could do so much better, even even not being professional. So <laughs> so so with th- with these tips, you know that 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 makes me feel even more confident. So you know I shall probably come back to you for, with more questions. <laughs> oh, time, thanks. Um. Amy, our, you know, we've we've had a great conversation. Our time's sort of running a little bit short now. So I just wanted to um just to sort of skip back a bit to to your to the vacation rental business. And just just to close off by asking you, if you were to talk to someone today who wanted to start a similar business, what tips would you give them that would would you know, you, you said at the outset here that you made a lot of mistakes. So perhaps you could you could help somebody out by by letting them know what they could do differently um, and and be more of a success at the outset. OK, well, I, I'll keep it short and sweet since we're running short on time. But I, I guess um, n- nothing rocket science, Heather. I wish I could could lend some crazy great suggestion. But um, I would say by first really, really knowing your market. Um, so many people come to our area in Tennessee and they go, oh, we, we moved to the area We're we're retiring here and we're going to, we're going to start renting vacation homes. We just decided we wanted to do that. And they have no clue, no clue of the history or the, the, um, ups and downs of the market. They don't know what they're getting into. So I would say the first thing is, Really do your homework and know your market. And then to do that, I would suggest that you interview people who you knew who you find successful in other markets. You probably won't get people in your own market to tell you their secrets or their mistakes. But if you like, for example, like Matt Landau's vacation rental marketing blog, 
Um, I'm, I'm a member there. You're a member there. So many of, of you know, your listeners, I'm sure, are too. There's other groups, you know, that are out there. I would suggest putting a question up and asking them what were the mistakes that they made. If there was something that they could do over again, one thing, what would they do? And then if you could collect a few of those and then apply that to your experience, it would probably help you avoid some of the pitfalls. So whether it's a software, you know, setting yourself up in the beginning or having better, um, you know, housekeeping and maintenance connections or, you know, whatever it may be, you know, or spending too much money on certain things where you should have maybe spent it in other places. Um, it's helpful to hear that. And then I would say, lastly, you need to really be honest with yourself. Um, it, it, there is an, a tremendous amount of energy and commitment that's required when you start up a vacation rental business. If, if someone would have told me that this was really going to be more of a 24-7 job, I might have thought twice about this. But I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I moved forward with it. But there are so many things that I didn't realize as far as the commitment of my energy and, and the responsibilities I would have. So for that, you know, I, I guess, you know, shame on me for not doing more homework before I got started. But if I could look back, I would say I would have talked to more people and gotten more information so that I could have started off a little bit more informed. I did a lot of homework, but I didn't do enough homework. You sound like me exactly what I did at the outset <laughs> you know just uh, launching into it and thinking it was all going to be hunky-dory and uh, yeah you get caught up a little short at the beginning <laughs> by by the commitment and the involvement that's that's required so uh, so yeah it's, it's it's actually fun to hear you say or almost echo what uh, what I've been thinking for a long time about uh, you know my my early days in this business <laughs> Amy, it's been an absolute pleasure having you um, having you on the podcast. It's uh, you know I've been I said to you when we started when we were talking before we started recording that uh, that I've been wanting to get you on for a long time and and it's been really worth the wait. So thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you for having me, Heather. I really enjoyed talking with you today. And and good luck with um with with your venture in in the future. And I will continue to look out look look at all your photographs because that's one way of um of getting some tips for for those of you who are listening is to actually go to um, Blue Mist Cabins and and check out the photographs that Amy has on her listings because um they are lovely and it they have given me a lot of ideas. So uh, so yeah, great to have you and um and good luck, Amy. Thank you, Heather. Well, many thanks, Amy, for, in, for joining me on the podcast for this episode. It was uh, full of content and I've got so many tips now that I'm going to take away to Kingfisher Cottage and, and get my photos done. So, uh, so that's really exciting. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming. Um, you know, I... I'm sure we all do this. We go and we look at our properties and we think, oh gosh, yes, it, it really does need an update. It needs an upgrade. And time moves on and bookings come in and before you know it, another season's gone. And this is what happened to, to us for, for the last really year of 18 months. I had so many ideas to get this property turned over, make make it, just give it some new life. And I... Uh, the, the time was never right. But uh, I have a great contractor, actually, who I spoke to. He's, he's, he's actually my handyman. He comes and does all the maintenance at, at our property and a number of other properties in the area. And it was, uh, it was Steve who said to me, he said, oh, he said, you know, there's a lot we could do with this. And he said, you haven't got anybody in for the next few weeks. Let's get her done. <laughs> and lo and behold, we've got her done. Uh, and I'm very, very happy about it. So I will be, I won't be um, posting any photos until the, the, the Renault's complete and all the furniture's in. And, uh, and, you know, as soon as I'm ready to post them on the listing, I'm going to post them up here on Cottage Blogger as well. So talking about Cottage Blogger, Mike is, uh, is still busy renovating the site, getting this ready for a relaunch. That's taken quite a while. He's, uh, so busy at it, him and Jason Beaton, 
who who's, who's who he's been working with very very closely. Jason from airtightmarketing.com. Um, oh, and just a little mention of of Jason. I'm actually working with Jason from Airtight Marketing on my uh, on on Cottage Link Rental Management and our email um, email marketing program, and we're, we're using a, a software called Active Campaign. So I've been working with uh, Jason on this. I'm going to get him onto the podcast very, very shortly to to talk about what he's doing for us and and how he sees this um, this this whole process going because we were in a mess, and I'm freely sharing that because we have not managed our marketing strategy for CLRM very well for a long, long time. And and we're now in the process of really ramping it up. We had help from Conrad O'Connell from 91 Digital and now with Jason from Airtight Marketing. It's uh, it's all getting ramped up and actually we really are already seeing the benefits. So um, so yeah, Mike's, uh, Mike and Jason are working together on the cottageblogger.com website and that in in fact is going to be relaunched very very soon and of course everybody's working really hard on the vacation rental success summit i will never go an episode without mentioning that if you haven't got your tickets yet you'd like a bit of a discount give me a shout send me an email at heather at cottageblogger.com and uh, and i have a discount uh, code for you so that's it for this week as this is published i'm on my way to berlin to visit my new granddaughter and uh, and that's going to be fun. So enjoy listening, and I will be looking forward to talking to you again next week. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business. 